Here in October 2023, Weber has released an updated version of their very popular Weber Q. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the history of the Weber Q lineup and how the most recent changes will impact the future of this channel. Stick around. Hey there, what's up you guys? I am Jerry and welcome to the channel, The Chicago Griller. This is the show where I share my favorite tips, tricks, and recipes for the Weber Q. If you think that I can help you out, hit that like button and subscribe. The Weber Q was first released nearly 20 years ago in 2004. These original Qs carried three digit model numbers. For example, the 100 for the baby Q, 200 for the midsize Q, and 300 for the family Q. There were also upgraded 120, 220, and 320 series models. These featured electric starters and built-in lid thermometers. But no matter what model you purchased, they all had that signature Weber Q look that we all still know today. And it's that oblong American football-like shape. And no matter which model you ended up purchasing, they all had remarkably similar grilling time and temperature characteristics. The idea behind the concept of the Weber Q was that it was a do-it-all grill that could cater to a wide variety of audiences. A small gas grill like the Weber Q could target people who lived in urban populations. These people often want the full grilling experience, but only have small outdoor spaces. In other words, people like me, or the OG YouTube Weber Q griller, the fire escape griller. I mean, look how perfectly this Weber Q tucks into my front patio. But a small package like this will obviously also be highly portable. So the portability aspect of the Weber Q was of course highly marketed as well. Think about your tailgate parties, picnics, or RV trips. On top of all that, these grills were all simple to use, easy to clean and maintain, and of course have Weber's legendary durability behind all that. So the Weber Q became a big hit and according to the company became their best-selling gas grill on a global basis. So of course nearly a decade goes by without any updates but just like any good company you're going to need to evolve and innovate to compete. So in 2013 to 2014 these three-digit models were phased out for a second generation, which is the current Weber Q that most of us on this channel probably have. These Qs carry a four-digit model number like the 1000, 1200, 2000, 2200, and so forth. Now, you all have probably heard the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, Weber took that to heart and didn't do any radical changes in this update. Quite frankly, most of the changes ended up being cosmetic. For example, the oblong shape got a little bit sleeker, the fonts and text design was modernized, and so forth. All in all, the functionality of the grill remained more or less the same. That said, there was one major innovation, and that was the introduction of the split grates. This allowed for several other great accessories like the Weber Q griddle and more recently the Weber Q saucepan and trivet. Now fast forward yet another decade and here we are with the introduction of the third generation in certain markets. I say certain markets because I think this Weber Q is currently only available in Australia and New Zealand because when you go shop the US site you still see just this second generation. So how can you tell if you have the new Weber Q in your market? Well, the model numbers changed again. Most notably, these new models all carry the letter N at the end of them. So for example, the 1200N, 2200N, etc. There are also a couple of additional trim levels that one can purchase, such as the plus models, which I'll touch on shortly. However, unlike the 2013-2014 update, 
some of the changes in this evolution are quite a bit more striking. First, there are the obvious exterior changes. While in general, the new Q maintains its signature oblong shape, it looks like the dimensions of the grille have changed a bit. Even with just the naked eye, it would appear that the Weber Q has gotten slightly taller, but also slightly narrower. And official documentation does suggest that my eyes aren't deceiving me, as you can see that this middle size Q, as a sample, has gained 2.5 centimeters of height, but also lost 4 centimeters of width. So also not surprisingly, the cooking surface size has also changed on these newest Q models. Once again, using the middle size model as my baseline, we've gone from 54 by 39 centimeters and increased the cook surface to 57 by 41 centimeters. This size increase, of course, necessitates a larger burner, so the output of the single burner on this new middle size Weber Q has increased from 12,000 BTU to 14,000 BTU. I will admit the increase in size is a little bit of a bummer because it means that all existing accessories and existing grates will no longer fit on the new model. So if you make this upgrade, you're gonna have to purchase a brand new griddle or brand new saucepan. Okay, okay, so down to brass tacks. What does all this mean? Does this mean that I need to abandon my current Weber Q models and run out as soon as the N becomes available in my market? Does it mean that all the content that I've created over the years here on this channel is now obsolete? Well, not necessarily, because if there's one thing that Weber has shown in the past is that when it evolves its new model line, the cooking characteristics do remain remarkably the same. So unless proven otherwise from real world usage, I'm gonna have to believe that despite the updated dimensions of the new Weber Q, cooking times and temps on the N models will remain the same as the three and four digit models. So as far as the Chicago Griller is concerned, it's business as usual, and I'll keep cranking out videos as time and weather allows. All that said, this video would not be complete if I didn't spend a little bit of time touching on these new plus models. Did you notice in some of these models and press materials that the addition of a second burner knob exists on the mid-size queue? Now, I have not been able to find a good photo or video of this, but it looks like there's a new single small burner that runs straight down the center of this new plus model. And there are two advertised purposes for this extra burner. First, if all of these are lit, this plus burner will allow for even higher heat sears, smack dab in the middle of your grill. But second, if you turn off the main burner and leave just the plus one on, this will allow for lower temperatures for some true low and slow grilling. Now, I do have to admit that these plus burners do sound pretty interesting. But also, truth be told, it's not the higher temperatures that I care the most about. Because as I proved in my most recent white bread test videos, the current generation of the Weber Q already has a hot spot smack dab in the middle of the grill. So in a way, it already cooks as if there was a plus burner in the middle. So I feel like the addition of this middle burner is just going to exacerbate an existing characteristic. So no, no, no. It's really the low and slow that I care most about. If you've seen some of my previous review or instructional videos, I mentioned that one of the disadvantages of the Weber Q is its inability to hit really low temperatures for true low and slow cooking. I think the lowest that you can get it to on a regular basis is around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So currently, the Weber Q isn't great for smoking and is unsuitable for even attempting some cuts of meat like brisket. So the new plus burner is interesting to me, not because of its searing characteristics, but because it's low and slow capabilities. And so there you go. There's my quick discussion on the history and the evolution of the Weber Q lineup. Like I said before, I don't think that the 2023 updates are really going to majorly impact this channel. As far as I'm concerned, unless proven otherwise, 
it's going to be business as usual. That said, I do look forward to seeing some of these new N and Plus models in person and would certainly be very interested in trying these out if and when they become available here in the USA. Let me know in the comments section down below if you're from Australia or New Zealand and have purchased or have seen these new models in person. I'd be very curious to hear your real world experience. Thank you all very much as always for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I cannot wait to see you all again next time. Bye!